Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be the mid-tier list for patch 7.33c, and as always, I get my information from the trends tab here, from Dota Buff, from Dota 2 Pro Tracker, you know, the pro matches, all that kind of stuff, and then I just mash it together, give my own take on it, so it's a little bit statistics-based, but also my opinion, and it's not necessarily for the pros or like 10k MMR or anything like that, it's more just for just like your average pubs. Um, and that kind of stuff, and what I think is strong now, based on what I'm seeing, you know, statistics, all that kind of stuff, and uh, that's how I arrive at this list. So, without further ado, let's jump into the S tier for mid, and the first year is going to be Void Spirit. So, Void Spirit, I kind of already talked about this hero a little bit in the carry video, because this hero is just so good, and the uni universal heroes in general are so good right now, that they can be played, like, in almost any position, that's how you know they're broken. Like, anytime you have something in Dota, a hero in Dota, that's able to play like three or more positions, you just know it's broken. And uh, if there's like a bunch of heroes like that, then there's something like probably wrong with the game. Now, I'm not going to say there's something fundamentally wrong with the game. I just think that overall universal heroes are a little bit over tweaked. It's not like that bad. I don't think it's like horrible for the game. It's not really that annoying. It's just that these heroes in their baseline just get so tanky and have so much damage that you don't really have to buy anything other than stats and like crit or minus armor and you can just be a right clicker and just do insane damage and carry the game so that's void spirit in the past this year used to be all about his spells doing spell damage buying octarine buying um kaya yasha or i mean kaya sanj and all that kind of stuff and you know getting ags silencing people jumping in initiating the fight all of that now this hero and what you know the reason why it's able to be played as a carry and why he was on the carry tier list is because this hero is all about like right click damage and you don't even have to care about your spells anymore you can use your ultimate to just jump in use your spells as like a way to lock people down or save yourself or have defensive mechanisms and all the while you're just right clicking people because you right click for insane amounts of damage you uh you know, just base level stats, so you can buy a crit, you can buy all this other stuff, you get insanely tanky, and then if you, like, need to, you can buy an Ags, or something else that just, like, silences people and controls them, and is very annoying. Um, I would recommend buying Ags, just because it is, like, a stat-heavy item, and it gives you that extra bit of... Um, control and stuff like that. You can be super annoying, just kill people with that. Uh, maybe not like second item, but obviously like fourth item or something like that. I would recommend getting it, especially for mid, because you don't want to just go hard carry like all the way with this kind of hero from mid. But yeah, you can basically be that other carry. You're just blowing supports up. You're like three shotting them. Uh, it's just absolutely insane. You also are very hard to lane against because as usual, this hero is a pretty good laner overall. But now, you know, with buying just straight up stats, you just have like 75, 80 damage so quickly. You're just denying everything it's just a ridiculously hard hero to lane against now even though obviously you're melee so you can get countered by some heroes but it is just very good in that way and that's void spirit and that's honestly a lot of the universal heroes now just overall very very good and next we have pango so pango's just a really good mid Aha! probably for multiple reasons um one of the main reasons Pango's though is that this game. hero buys diffusal and has swashbuckle yeah, and uh medusa is very good uh, and still is very good. So that's one of the main reasons. But otherwise, I mean, the hero is just overall is really, really good. Um, I believe they buffed it here and there because it wasn't the best in the last patches. So now they buffed it just slightly. Nothing crazy. But this hero just does insane amounts of damage. Um, gets, like... Uh, so hard to deal with in the mid lane because he just kind of like clears the waves and g clears the wave and then runs away and just ganks people is very very good against medusa um it just does pangolier things but now it's just better than he was before and the you know the pros are spamming this hero and doing really well with it now i think he does get countered by like bloodseeker which is one reason why bloodseeker is also good uh but overall i don't think there's anything special about pango unless i'm missing something very very fundamental like generally, you know, he has shield crash upgrade, the ag shard upgrade, which actually is not as good as it once was, um, rolling thunder, it's actually not as good as it once was, because it is BKB, um, lucky shot, I mean, armor reduction, pretty good, you know, mischance, pretty good, shield crash overall, decent, swashbuckle, as always, decent, like, there's nothing fundamentally changed with the hero, the talent tree is not, like, crazy different, I just think that overall the hero is very, very good for what's good in the game, like, he's good against a lot of the heroes that are good in the game, he can do damage to Slark, uh, when Slark's, you know, ulted, he can do damage to Medusa and, like, you know, remove all of Medusa's mana very, very quickly, he just is very good against everything that's good right now, um, except for, like, Bloodseeker, basically, <laughs> so that's why I think Pango is really good, also, I mean, just look, I mean, if you just look here, look at this, this guy, this guy, 
this guy. You know, all yeah, universal heroes. We have happens. one non-universal hero up here in the top mid heroes. And that's, I mean, that's just the other big reason. So I obviously didn't mention that as Pango, but he just does insane amounts of damage. Is the same thing that every other universal hero is. It's just, you know, he's broken. So that's pretty much it. Next, we have Queen of Pain. And the main reason why I put Queen of Pain up here is because, one, it's getting picked. It is very good. I just think it's not as necessarily good as some of these other heroes, these universal heroes that are broken. But this hero has gotten back to being able to lane dominate. Um, a lot of these heroes are melee, and you can just dominate them in lane. You can dominate a lot of the spirit heroes, which are very... Um, very popular right now. So it doesn't have a lot of popular counters in lane. I mean, it always has been a pretty good lane dominator, but I feel like over the years, that idea that like, oh, Queen of Pain dominates lanes has just kind of gone away. And there's a lot of heroes that have gotten more ability to deal with what she does. And uh, now I think it's just that she really has a lot of good matchups. So all the heroes that are good against her that can deal with her are just not as popular. But then the biggest thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that the Ags is actually good now. So at the AoE Shadow Strike, and when it dispels, it, like, uh, it releases a Scream of Pain, it just feels really good. I thought it was stupid and bad when I first like heard about it and when it first became a thing, but uh, now it's actually really good. So it just, you giga slow everybody, and then you're doing tons of damage in team fights because the thing is, when you reapply this now, it actually releases the Scream of Pain. So it's like basically reapplied or dispelled. So this four-second cooldown is insane. So you're doing like, you know, you, you throw this out, you're slowing everybody in an AoE. Then you just Scream of Pain them normally. And then like you click them a few times and then this is up again. So you, you hit them again and then they get another Scream of Pain. Like this is just damage like stacks up and stacks up and stacks up. You have your Silence on Blink as you usually do with the Shard. Um... But yeah, and now you're very tanky too because you're buying ags. Like you can be very tanky, hard to deal with. You're in and out. That's I think the main thing is that this hero is very good in lane now against a lot of the matchups and the ags is just broken uh, and very, very good. And even though you can like buy things to dispel it, like, you know, Lotus Orb or whatever, it just, that doesn't really help because now you're just like Lotusing yourself, but then everyone around you gets damaged, uh, which is kind of crazy. And then lastly, we have Windranger. I probably could have put Windranger back in here with all the other Universal Heroes. But yeah, this hero's broken. Universal Hero. Uh, I think this hero's better as a mid than a carry, even though obviously a lot of people are playing as a carry. I just think in pubs, it's better as a mid. Because as a mid, you just get all the same things that you get as a carry. It's just you get them quicker. And this hero doesn't really flash farm. It's not just like, you know, a flash farmer where you don't have that much spell. like you buy maelstrom you buy or you have power shots yes you can farm like you can't do it but this here is better at just like clearing waves and then just like ganking or just like right clicking people and then you have a carry that like can back you up that you can rely on later in the game and so you're not only are you you know not only are you doing really well you're ganking you're deleting one hero in the late game but now you have this other carry that you can rely on to actually like do other damage if you know deleting one hero isn't good enough or let's say the best or the most important hero in the game is like a support well sometimes that can feel weird as a carry you're just like only deleting a support and then you can't do anything else it just feels weird now if you do that as a mid like you have a carry that can still carry the game and you know do everything else they need to do or you can be the guy that deletes the one hero uh you can focus fire the enemy carry that you need to kill, and then your other carry is like a Slark that wants to jump in and kill the supports, or, you know, that kind of thing. So it just feels better as a mid to me, in pubs at least. But yeah, it's a it's a universal hero, guys. Uh, very, very good. Insane damage. This hero is like right-clicking for, like, again, yeah, like 70 damage with no, like, Quelling Blade, and you're just like, what's going on? And then this hero is giga tanky and just power shotting you from half health, and you're just like, what? Um, yeah, very hard to deal with. Universal hero is pretty broken right now. Next, we have A tier. So A tier, we have Ember Spirit, Storm Spirit. The reason why I'm grouping these together is just because, like, the spirits are good. I think in a game where people don't really know exactly how to play the game with the map and people are just skirmishing all the time, you know, spirits are going to be good. And they are very good right now. Um, the big thing is, obviously, they can get countered by, like, Queen of Pain, some of this kind of stuff. They're not as broken, these two, because they're not universal. Like, if these were universal heroes, they would be <laughs> broken, obviously. But I think that's the main thing. There's nothing super special other than they can fight a lot. They can gank a lot. They're good at, like, playing on the map. That's really just what they do and why they're so good right now. It's kind of like the default that people go to when they don't know what else to do. Batrider has been changing a lot over patches they constantly are changing this hero um it's just weird like with the way the sticky works right now um you don't really have to like rely on it a hundred percent you can just like use your other spells and still do pretty well and farm really quickly i think this here is just like a stable hero overall there's nothing like super broken about it actually and if we click on it the thing that's super broken is this <laughs> that's that's really what it is um so yeah they just the hero is just 
good because now you don't have to rely on because you can just buy the stats and upgrade this hero's like right click damage. You don't have to rely on the sticky napalm as much. Where before it felt like you couldn't last it at all without sticky napalm. Now it's just like you don't care as much um, because you just are getting so many stats early and getting your right click damage to actually be decent. Um, so that's Bat Rider. Huskar, kind of like a niche pick. Uh, can be good in some games. Not like it's just, I think this hero actually should be like over here. Let's, let's do this. These two heroes are like kind of like spammy. Um, you know, just cheese heroes. If you're good at them, if you know what you're doing, you can do really well. Like, Tank Tinker can be super annoying, can stomp games, like a stomping game kind of thing, like a smurf kind of thing. I'll go back to Magnus here, too. Magnus, another one where, oh, what do you know? Universal hero. I already talked about him with a carry. He's more of a carry. I think this hero is actually probably better as a carry than a mid. That's why I put him here in the, uh, in the A tier. I think it was A tier for carry, too. Just because I think he's good. He's just not, like, 100% reliable. Like, I don't love him for pubs as a carry, but he is very good, but then I put, like, Windranger better as a mid, I just think she's better as a mid in pubs than, uh, than Magnus is. Magnus can still get ca kind of countered in lane, and yeah, he can farm, it's just, like, there are things about him I don't love for pubs, uh, but yeah, he's still very good, universal hero. And then lastly on this, uh, list is Nyx. Now, Nyx is one of these heroes that, again, universal, is played in every single role, pretty much, uh, other than carry. And I think the worst role, actually, other than carry, obviously, because it doesn't play that, is probably offlane. Like, I hate when I have this hero offlane. It just feels like it does nothing. But you can play this hero as a mid, like, 100%. Like, it is very good. It's hard to deal with him in the lane. You can still lane pretty well, although it's not, like, the best laner. But just that once you hit stick, once you hit six, and you just, like, buy Dagon, and you just keep getting it up to, like, Dagon five, and you just, like, eliminate people from the game. Like, you just pick a person, you're like, oh, you don't have a sentry? Or even if you do, who cares, unless you're, like, stunning me and I can't hit you, you're just dead. Like, I'm just going up and just killing you. I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter what hero you are. You just die. From full to zero. It's, you can't do anything. It's just so weird. Like, I've played against this hero so many different times. I've had it as support, whatever. If you're, like, allowed to get items and you're allowed to, like, play the game, and they don't just have sentries everywhere, it's not like you can actually gank people, the game just ends. Like, you just can't... They, they can't do anything. It's insane what this hero does. Um, but it's mainly like a pub stomping hero. It's not really like a high MMR kind of hero. It's not really like a pro hero from mid, but in pubs, you will stomp with him. Next, we have B tier. Puck is like the worst of the spirit heroes. It's basically like a uh, fairy spirit or whatever. This hero is good, but just not great. Um, pretty much average, middle of the road. Like if you want to play a spirit hero, but they're all banned or you don't like him for the game or whatever, Puck's pretty good right now. Winter Wyvern, another universal hero that is just like pretty good i mean i've played against some of these heroes where or some of these winter wyverns where it just feels so hard to play against them because they're slowing you and then they can kill you really you know they can do normal winter wyvern mid things i think it's just better now because it has more stats more damage um you're also really good against a lot of these tanky heroes i think you're good against a lot of these universal heroes that get super tanky that buy a lot of stats um, because you're just like melting them with percentage based damage that's i think why winter wyvern is pretty good right now along with also being universal Necro, just decent. I think middle of the road average uh, can be very hard to lane against. Just has like good matchups with some of these tanky heroes can be hard to play. He also has now or play into he can stomp games. But I think the other thing is he has this like mobility spell now. His uh, shard used to be he like sent out another pulse that like made you uh, ethereal and or made whatever it hit ethereal and did a pulse but now he travels with that it doesn't make you ethereal anymore but he like travels with it so i think that's the big thing is like giving this hero a mobility spell where he doesn't really even have to buy blink anymore he can just go for like tankiness and damage just makes this hero pretty broken and pretty crazy uh it's not like obviously as broken as everything else but it makes him viable and good i think they're just giving people mobility spells all over the place but that just is what it is Monkey King is just a generally overall good hero, better as a carry, but if you can get away with playing in mid, like, sometimes you can have a hard time playing against some of these really, really powerful heroes, so it is like a matchup thing, but overall this hero can be good, and you can just play him, like, as another carry from the mid lane. Tibber's also, like, a weird spot. Uh, sometimes it can feel completely broken, and, like, it does insane damage, but then other times it just feels really bad. I think it's almost like more of a mid laner now than it used to be. I mean, this here, again, universal hero, but uh, more than an off laner, but it can do both. It's just one of those things that almost feels like a cheese hero in a sense. Like, I should honestly just like put this over here because Timbersaw just feels like if you know how to play Timbersaw, if you're good with the hero, if you can know when to go in and when to get out and like what counters you and like the how to push the hero to its limits, you can just stomp games and it's so hard to deal with you unless you have the right lineup to deal with you. We have Omni Knight. Omni Knight's almost like a Nyx Assassin weird, like, one-off pub hero. It just... 
uh, has like with the way they change the spells, um, you have this new hammer of purity that actually can like uh, do extra damage and stuff and slows people. Then you can run up and click them. It feels a lot better to play this Omni Core than it used to. You have um, the shard as well. I'm going to heal for 30% of the damage dealt. So it's like you're very, very tanky. You're running in. You're very good at last hitting. You can just like chase people down the lane. Obviously, if you're mid, you're not doing that as much. But then this hero is very good with, I mean, his ultimate's always good. I just think that if you play this hero as like like a support, it just can feel like a one-hit wonder where you're just like healing somebody and then you're pressing R. Where now, if you can actually get aggressive, go in, you can buy you know stats be very tanky and then actually do some damage which is good pure damage is always going to be something that you can't count out count out so look for this hero to be like more on the upswing on the up like rising up through the meta in the next patches if it doesn't get nerfed i hope it doesn't because that'd be kind of cool to see like omni mid or like omni core is a real thing i think it's kind of viable now it has a decent win rate but it's just not like the best then we have lone druid again pretty good if you're a lone druid player you know how to play it pretty decent same thing with arc warden pretty good more of a mid than a carry i think i've seen arc warden stomp before i've seen um lone druid stomp and i've actually seen meepo stomp i think meepo was like the worst of the kind of spammy you know smurfy heroes but now with like the dig that it has which is like i've seen a few meepos that are probably smurfs to be honest use this dig like really effectively to just it's so hard to kill him now once he has that because it's just he just kind of you know, puts his Meepos in the ground when you're about to kill them, and they pop back up. They're, like, full health, and it's just, you have to, not only do you have to kill, there's, like, five guys you have to deal with, you have to kill one, but now he's, like, healing himself. It's just, it's super awkward and weird. This hero is very good, I think, um, if you know how to play him. So that's B tier. Next, we have C tier. These heroes are viable, but just not great. Death Prophet, it just doesn't feel, like, it's been good for so long. They nerfed it a lot. It's okay still, but also I think these, like, big ultimates where you, like, have to commit for towers with the map being so big, and you can just, like, kind of, there's so many different ways you can just run away from Death Prophet. You can just get out. You don't have to commit your team to, like, fighting in this area. It just feels like Death Prophet isn't as good at that since she's all about, like, forcing objectives, controlling an area, having this ultimate, and then otherwise just not as great. Pugna, I think, more of a support now, but still can be actually pretty good as a core. Uh, just it's just kind of whatever it used to be trash as a mid but now it's like getting better i think they're they've increased i think either the cast range or like the damage on the uh uh the q to like make him able to take towers more which definitely helps him as a core zeus kind of fallen off this hero it's like weird it's like a i don't know meme hero now because of like the right click build with the shard i think the shard was why this hero was good not just like overall obviously you had the jump that made him good and all this other stuff that the hero does normally with a lot of damage and the ags but the shard obviously gave you that extra bit of damage like that extra punch that you used to have with your passive but that's just gone now i think that is it in his um i think it might be yeah i think it's in his talent tree um but not like fully because like six percent arc lightning current health as damage i think that's new if i remember but yeah i think pretty much every like that whole just extra bonus damage on your spells is gone if i remember 100 percent correctly but now you have this like right click and it just the right click's a meme i mean it's like okay sure but i think it's just a meme i think it's better in pubs but it's not great like you're still gonna get gone on you're like a sniper you're right clicking but whatever i don't think it's that good snapfire it's okay uh i've seen it played mid actually decently um, it's a universal hero, so that's the only reason why it's actually decent, like, off lane and mid, is because it's a universal hero, but otherwise, I think, it does the same thing Snapfire has always done from core, you know, builds ags, build these, builds, uh, stuff that makes the right click, uh, the, the, uh, oh, what's it called? Not the focus fire. The little shredder. Makes the little shredder good in the late game with, like, crit, and you just blow people up. Alchemist kind of fell off, just always was less of a mid, almost was being more of a carry and even an off lane at times than a mid, but it was still played mid and now it's just got, like I said, nerfed, like with the Medusas and the other things that were really good this patch, Alchemist got nerfed the most, I already kind of talked about that in the carry tier list, but similar things happen here with the mid, uh, I think I could almost put Alchemist even lower, I just feel like people aren't picking this as much, and then Shadow Fiend, some people are trying to make it work, I think it can be okay, it's not that good in my opinion, um, but I think it could be okay and people are trying to make it work. I don't really know what it's going to take to make this hero good. I think it's more of a right clicker than a spellcaster, but, uh, and I put it here just because in pubs, I think you can stomp with the hero, but otherwise it's just, there's something fundamentally wrong with Shadow Fiend. He has not been good for so long. And last of like the viable heroes or the heroes that are actually mids, we have D tier, uh, OD, just bad. It was like, okay in the, uh, 
in the meta before 7.33 with the uh, Meteor Hammer buff, but that's kind of like gone away. People aren't really buying that anymore. So OD, you're just gone. Uh, TA, it just feels weird. Like there's other better heroes. Not like there's other, if you want to play carry from the mid, just pick like you know some other hero. There's so many more heroes like that. Primal Beast fell off completely. Like, nobody plays this hero. This hero's garbage now. Uh, it, it does have low cooldowns and skirmishes, but it just feels like worse than ever um, before. And so people are just not picking it. Invoker too slow. Way too slow. Just, like, needs to farm. The spells are bad. It just... I mean, unless you're, like, getting Cataclysm with, like, a Faceless Void. Just what are you even doing? Um, Kunkka, very bad. Dead hero. Like, what does this hero do? I don't know. It's, like, tanky. But then, okay. Who cares? Dragonite, not a mid. More of a carry. Because you're not buying Midas from mid. If you're, like... That's the problem. If you're buying, like, Midas and trying to just go for, like, the late game, what do you just do? You have no impact. Yeah, you're, like, clicking a tower slowly. But then just, like, pick Pugna or something. Pick, like, any other hero that does tower damage. You know, any hero, really. Just... Who can, like, these heroes can do more tower damage, you know, any hero can do tower damage by just clicking it, like, this guy does more, but it's just not enough. Pudge, I've seen him actually kind of be decent from the mid lane, if you know how to play Pudge and can snowball, it's still viable, it's not like F tier like it used to be for a long time. Viper, kind of just, I think, more of an off lane these days, it just hasn't been mid for a long time. I think it's still kind of viable as an off lane, uh, but still not very good as a mid. Lesh was, like, giga broken um, for a while there. You saw gaming gladiators play it a lot in the major. Um, I don't even, I don't know. Did they play it last major? I don't think they played it last major as much with the new patch, but the major before that definitely. This hero was very very good, uh, but it kind of they obviously nerfed it. It was like the hero, and so they nerfed it into the ground. And then with the new patch, it just doesn't feel that great. Visage has kind of been nerfed into the ground ever since uh, I think like Ti, um, and with uh, Wraith Pack just being deleted. Thank God, this hero's just been crap ever since. It just doesn't feel good. And then F tier, finally, we have heroes that are just, like, not even mids. Like, this hero became a carry, and then they nerfed it to, like, they giga nerfed it. I still think it's kind of like a mid still, but still, it's just so bad. Don't pick this hero. It's just trash now. Um, Tusk, kind of deleted, too. It's just not really a mid. It was good, like, again, last patch before the new big patch came, and now it's just gone. Sniper, just overall gone as a hero. It just feels so immobile. Just very bad. Doesn't want to skirmish. Just doesn't do anything well. Tiny, I think it's still viable as a mid, like, somewhat, I think you can actually still get away with it, but the, the win rate is, like, trash, I don't know, the win rate is, like, 30 or 40%, like, it's so bad, so I'm just putting it down there, just, like, don't pick this hero, I think, <laughs> uh, Razor deleted from the game, pretty much, uh, it's been so good, it was so good for so long, they were just like, ah, we're deleting this hero, Keeper of the Light, not a mid, hasn't been a mid in a while, I honestly should probably just delete it from the list, and then, uh, Gyrocopter, still also not a mid, it's, like, weird, this hero's not a carry, not a mid, it's, if it, the thing is, it used to be a carry slash mid, that would farm from the mid lane, and now you actually could play it mid if you played it like the spell build that you would play if you were four position. So it's just weird, but still, just don't don't play it as a core. Just play it as like a four, and that's pretty much it. So that is F tier. Those are the heroes you shouldn't really pick. These are all the heroes for the mid lane, um, S to D, and then to F that you shouldn't pick. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.